Hello and welcome to the third and final part of my Holy Grail time lapse series. In part one I covered gear and how to power it and in part two I covered a number of topics including composition, setting up and settings. Now in part three I will cover post-processing, seeing the tools that I use to take a bunch of raw files to a completed time lapse video. At the end you will get to see the final output, a full day to night to day time lapse which I took at Trichine in the Dolomites. So let's jump straight in. using a number of applications here to process the images into the final video. In the first stage I want to edit all of the stills and for this I'll be using a combination of Lightroom and a piece of software called LR Timelapse. In the second stage once the images are processed I'll create the final video using Adobe Premiere Pro. In the free version of LR Timelapse you can process up to 400 images in one go. My time lapse took over 900 images, so for larger time lapse work, I would recommend purchasing a license. And if you intend on doing a number of time lapse videos, then I can highly recommend. And uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Okay, recording in three, two, one. Screen is recording. So to start, I organize all my raw files into a folder. And for this demo, I'm going to use 400 images from my Trichime time lapse. Okay, just do that. Anyway. Um, so you can see in here, I have got images taken from around about just before seven o'clock in the evening, and you can see the raw file here, all the way through to just before midnight, I think. Yeah, here. So what I want to do is go and open up the LR time lapse app and I've got it open and click on the folder where I've got all my raw images uh, and once you first do that it'll load them in and have a look at the luminance of all of the images. You can see this blue line in the top left corner above the uh, image that I've got selected it shows you the relative luminance of all of the photos in the series you can see obviously it drops off in the middle here as the sun sets and we get into night time. In order to start this process off, I'm going to be using um, the visual workflow, which is on the top here. And what you want to do um, is start at the keyframes wizard and work through the various different stages that you've got here. So with 400 images taken at 45 second intervals for, for my time lapse, Four or five keyframes would be enough. I'm going to select four here. So let's go through keyframes, select how many you want. I think I'm already on four. And you see you've got a little blue dot against the images that it's selected as my keyframes. So with this done, we want to save the current metadata for each of these photos into a separate XMP file. Okay, once that is saved, I'm just going to go back to the folder, open it up again. And you can see now each of the images has its own separate XMP file which will hold the metadata. This is what LR Time Lapse uses to alter the metadata for each of the images to smooth out things that you do in the edits in Lightroom. So I'm going to drag this to Lightroom. I'm literally just going to click on that, and drag it down to the bottom, put it onto Lightroom Classic, and we'll wait for that to open. Twenty minutes later. Okay, so we finally imported the images into Lightroom, and on the Library tab, um, you have these filters at the top and if you've installed LR time lapse correctly you'll have a couple or a few um, extra filters that appear up here. You want to select the one that says LR T5 keyframes if you're using LR time lapse 
version number five. So I'll select that. And you can see now, I've only got the four images that I originally selected as the keyframes. And these are the ones that we're going to go ahead and edit. So I'm gonna go into the develop tab. <clears throat> if you watch the second video, you'll notice that the nighttime scenes are, are very orange. The white balance is way too high in these images. So what I wanna do is bring that white balance down. And what LR time lapse will do gradually is move the settings that I make from each photo to the next and, and sort of graduate those changes. I'm gonna select the first one. Uh, just maybe do a bit of auto, see what happens. There you go. Maybe do a little bit of curves. And what I definitely want to do is enable the profile correction. So I was using the Samyang 14 mil. And go ahead and make any other edits that you wanna make. Once you've done the first image, you'll see that you have a scripts section at the top here. A couple of scripts have come from LR Timelapse. What you wanna do is select the first and then the second photo, or the one you've just edited and the very next photo that you're going to edit and click sync keyframes script. Just copies over the settings from one to other. So if I go to the second one now, you can see that it's, the white balance isn't too high, but maybe a little bit high still. So 4,800, let's bring that down to 4,000. And I also want to start boosting the shadows at this point as well. And bring that into play. Now, an important thing to note here is that I wanted to use graduated edit masks, these graduated masks here, to change the night sky and not affect the foreground. And if you do want to use these graduated masks, what I found was is that I had to put a mask on the first image, not make any edits, and let that copy over to the second one. If the second image had a graduated mask on it, and the first one didn't, the, the, the graduated mask would spin around in the final edit as it came out of LR time lapse. So it's just one thing I would like to note. I'm going to assume that all my keyframes are now edited, so I'm just going to edit them quickly. Okay. These aren't really my final edits, they're just a, a quick rough run through to show you how to do this. But once you've made all of your edits, what you want to do is select your, your keyframes in Lightroom right click and then you want to then save the metadata which is in the metadata save metadata to files what this will do is transfer those settings and changes and edits that you've just made within Lightroom back into LR time-lapse so with that done back to LR time-lapse and we're going to pick up the workflow. I'm going to click reload here and that will bring the, the metadata from the XMP files that we just saved in Lightroom back in. And we should see some changes on the right hand side here where those settings will now be visible. One I'm going to pick on is white balance temperature because that was a clear and obvious um, thing that needed to be changed when you looked at the raw footage from uh, part two. So if I only go in here to show you the white balance temperature, I've got these little ticks where the white balance has changed on the keyframes. Now we go ahead and click auto transition. So this is really where the magic happens on LR time lapse. It'll auto transition all of those settings that we made and the changes that we made in Lightroom 
from one uh, photo to the other. So as you can see, we made some changes to the white balance and this has now altered the line of the white balance. So you see the first one's at 4,800, the second one's at 4,793. You can work this out manually if you've got a large exercise book, plenty of pencils, maybe a calculator, and do each one manually in Lightroom, but that is a massive ball ache. So th this piece of software does it for you. It is fantastic. So with that done, you can then move on to doing the visual preview. So that will render all of these images into the top left thing here so you can have a quick preview of what the time lapse will look like. So while this visual preview is still rendering, I'm going to talk about the last little bit here. So to finish the workflow, obviously we do the visual preview um, and then we can check what the video looks like and what the final output is going to look like based on our edits and based on what LR time lapse has decided the transition between those edits is. Then we will use the visual deflicker, which will fine tune the changes in exposure between each frame. Something that will really help if you shot your time lapse on aperture priority and the metering wasn't quite up to scratch and you've got some jumps in exposure, this will even it out. So once this is done, you should then go back into Lightroom. I'm doing it a bit early, but I'll go here anyway. And back into the library. We can now remove that filter for the keyframes to have a look at the full sequence. The final stage before I go to Adobe Premiere is to take all of the images, put them into JPEGs so I can then render them in the final video. So go into the library, select all of the images, right click, go to metadata and ask it to read the metadata from files. So what it'll be reading is all of the settings that LR time lapse thinks these should have. Click read and it'll bring in all of those changes. Now what I'll do is just export them as JPEGs and then pump them into Adobe Premiere Pro. Look at that. As if by magic, I now have 400 processed images on my desktop. Now these are the ones that I've actually spent some time working through. And I've got 400 JPEGs. Now what I want to do is jump into Adobe Premiere Pro. Here, I've got a project set up. I'll go to my media browser and what I want to do is find my desktop 400 processed images and import them into my project. Once I've got that I will need to create a new sequence. Now we have a load of different templates that you can use but they won't be the same size as the images that you've taken out of your camera. So what you want to then go and do is create a custom sequence, but with the pixel dimensions of your final images. To do this, go into settings on the new sequence, editing mode custom, how many frames per second? I would suggest 25 for a time lapse. 25 or 24 is fine. And then set your frame size. 4240 by 2832 and click OK. We then have our new sequence where we're going to drop in all of the images. Now what I want to do is go to my images that are in the media browser here and select them all and then click this button here called Automate to Sequence. Once you click that, you'll have this little pop-up. Now, I selected them from 400 to one, so I don't want to do it in selection order, so I'm gonna do it in sort order. 
can see when I exported these images from Lightroom, I said to put in the file name a sequence number from one to whatever number you go to, which helps with the sorting when you get into Premiere Pro. The placement you want sequentially. The clip overlap is zero frames, so each image is one frame. And frames per still, one frame. There you go. Click OK. And we should bring all of those in. And now you can see our time lapse in Premiere Pro. I have my sequence with all of this in. Now I'm going to create a second sequence. But this time, this sequence is going to be a 4K sequence, which is going to be ready for YouTube. YouTube. Now I've got my YouTube sequence. What I'm going to do is just drag sequence one, which is the one where I made the time lapse in and drag it in here. I'm going to keep existing settings. Now you can see the time lapse and I can add effects to it. I'm going to go towards the end of the night and show you the hot pixels that I've got by boosting the shadows. So like I said in part two of this series, I needed to get all of my settings so I could not overexpose the sunset and sunrise shots, but also get a decent night sky. Because it was so dark at Trachime, what I had to do was boost the shadows in Lightroom. And by boosting the shadows, I've brought out a lot of this nasty noise. Now I wanna get rid of that. So what I'm gonna do is go to the effects panel, search for dust, and get this dust and scratches here. I'm going to drag that over to this sequence and in the top left I can adjust the settings of the dust and scratches effect. Now you want to set the radius to one, any more than one and it's going to think a lot of your stars are actually dust and scratches and you don't want that. You can see I've set radius to five and well all of my stars have gone. You might want that, but I don't. So I'm gonna set this to one. Some of the stars will disappear, but then you'll also get rid of a lot of this noise on the hot pixels uh, from the shadows when you've had to boost them. Okay, and that is it. You can now export out of Premiere Pro to an MP4 file, upload it to YouTube, and show everyone your beautiful holy grail time-lapse. Okay, so now I'm going to show you two videos. First, the sequences side by side, unprocessed RAW and processed time lapse. Then, just a full screen version of the final output. Enjoy.
Hi guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please drop me a, a like or a subscribe. Check out my Instagram for some more of my work or just do none of those things and crack on with your own time lapses. Either or, laters. <laughs> <laughs>